Rigging complex setups normally takes a lot of time, but today I'm going to show you a simple way you can create IK and FK switching in just a matter of minutes. I've broken all of this info down into four easy steps, so let's dive straight in and get started. The most important thing is to make sure your rig is set up correctly. If you haven't already done it, you'll need to create an armature for your mesh. So press Shift A and create an armature. Press Tab to enter into edit mode and move, rotate and extrude bones to create this basic skeleton. Find the limb you want to add IK and FK to, in this case it's the arm, and you'll want to make two copies of it. One will be the IK chain and the other will be the FK chain. So select all the bones from the upper arm to the wrist and press Shift D to duplicate. With the bone still selected, press Shift M and move the bones onto a new collection and name this collection IK. With the bone still selected, make sure to remove them from any other bone group by selecting the group with this little dot on it and pressing the remove button in the bone collections UI. Repeat the exact same steps for the FK chain and you should have two chains separated on two bone collections as well as the original skeleton. With the three chains made, you can now rename the duplicates by using the suffix IK or FK respectively. If your chains are on the right or left hand side of the body, it's important to keep the .l or .r suffixes intact if you want to be able to mirror this setup. Another thing you need to do is uncheck the deform option for all IK and FK bones, as we don't want these bones affecting the skinning of our mesh. Now you have these bones created, you can start by creating the IK chain. Select the wrist bone and extrude a bone out by pressing E and moving it on the Y axis. If you take a look at the bones axis, you can see that it matches the orientation of the world, making it a lot easier to track the animation curves in the graph editor. Next, you need to unparent this, so press Alt-P and clear the parent. Now you want to parent the wrist joint to this IK control. So make sure you're in edit mode and select the wrist, then shift select the IK control and press Control p to keep the offset. To create the actual IK, select the elbow bone and head over to the bone constraints tab and add an IK constraint. Choose the IK control as the constraint and change the chain length to 2. Now you should see the chain working, but we have a bit of a problem. In reality, the hand should stick to the end of the arm and not go wandering off of the control. So to fix this, you need to add a copy location constraint to the hand. Select the target as the armature and the bone to the elbow bone. You'll see that the hand will now jump to the elbow, but we want it to be attached to the wrist. So to fix this, move the head on tail slider to 1. Finally, we can add a pole vector control by heading back into edit mode and extruding a bone out from the elbow. Alt P to unparent this and move it along in the Y axis. Rename this bone to something like pole vector arm .l. And in pose mode, head back to the IK constraint properties and add this bone as the pole target. If your bones have now moved, you might need to adjust the pole angle to fix this. Adjust this to something like 90 degrees. With the IK done, the FK chain is next and if your joint chain is already in a normal hierarchy, you shouldn't have anything to do, as long as all of these bones are parented to the bone before it. After you've created both bone chains, it's time to hook up the switching functionality. Starting with the IK chain, hide all bone layers except the IK layer, and the layer with your original bones. Select the first bone in the IK arm, shift select the deformed bone, and add a copy constraints transform by pressing Control shift c and selecting it from the pop-up menu. Repeat these exact same steps for the elbow and wrist, and now if you move the IK controls, you should see your arm moving along with the IK setup. For the FK controls, it's exactly the same. Hide the IK layer and show the layer that contains the FK bone. Just repeat the steps by selecting the FK bone, shift selecting the deformed bone, and adding another copy transforms constraint by pressing Control shift c and selecting it from the menu. If you've moved your IK arm, you should see the deformed bones moving towards the FK chain now, and adjusting this influence value on the constraint will control the IK and FK blend, but more on that later. Do the exact same steps for the rest of the bones in this chain, and you should be left with a deformed chain with two constraints on each bone. With all the constraints set up, it's finally time to add in a control that will perfectly blend between FK and IK. I usually like to have this control above the head, but you can put this wherever you want. Since I'll be placing it above the head, in edit mode I'll duplicate the head bone and move it up in the Z axis. In pose mode, make sure to uncheck deform and rename this bone to something like rig properties. Lock the translation, rotation and scale by pressing this padlock here and this makes sure we can't accidentally move or keyframe this bone. Next you want to add a custom driver to this control to control the blending. So head over to the bone properties menu and under custom properties select add new. Press the cog icon to adjust the settings. I'll rename this to LIKFK arm 
and keep the default values as it is. But one thing I'll do is to tick library overrides. With that created, you want to right click and select copy as new driver, as we're going to be using this to control the constraints influence. Go back to the deform chain and select the arm bone. In the constraints menu, find the last copy transform constraint and right click the influence slider and select paste driver. Now you can go back to the rig properties bone and adjust the IKFK slider and you should be able to see your changes. Just repeat these exact same steps for the rest of the bones and you should have a full IKFK switch working. To make this a bit easier to animate, you can create some control shapes for the IK and FK bones. I'm using the bone widget add-on to quickly create these control shapes and there's a link to download this add-on in the description. You can now put all of these controls on a separate bone collection to keep everything even more organised. Now it can be quite hard to see which controls you're using, whether you're using IK or FK, but there's an easy way to solve that. We can use the same driver to control the visibility of our control objects. With our slider set to 1, you can see it's in FK mode, and our slider set to 0, it's in IK mode. To adjust the controls visibility, you can copy the switch control as a driver and paste it into the hide checkbox under the viewport display. Now if you move the slider, you should be able to see the IK control appearing when it's in IK mode and disappearing when it's in FK mode. Repeat these steps for the pole vector control and you're done with the IK. The FK controls however are a little bit different, but still start off the same by copying the slider as a driver and pasting it into the viewport display for the FK control. Now you can see we actually want the reverse of what's happening, so to do that, right click and select edit driver. Change the type to scripted expression and change the name to something like X. In the expression field, you can now type one minus X and you should now see the visibility working as it should. You can now copy this attribute and paste it as a driver to the rest of the FK bones in the chain. One thing to keep in mind though, if you do want to symmetrize this setup to the other side, you will have to repeat the driver setup as Blender doesn't mirror these attributes. Now, all of this information is completely useless if you don't know the fundamentals of rigging in Blender all of which I explain in this video here.